Hi guys, the last few days you have been doing different problem solving um, problems. So we're gonna move on. We're still continuing with um, using skills that you've already learned this year. So this lesson, which is lesson 26, it's not new. Um, we actually did it, um, I believe, maybe in the fourth module. So not new for us. Um, we're going to be writing and interpreting numerical expressions. So actually this is also kind of what you did. Um, we made some seesaw activities about it too. So again, not new, um, just kind of covering what we've done this year and then also preparing you for sixth grade math. So in each of these, I'm on page 126, in each of these problems, they're giving you words, and we are going to use those words to write a numerical expression, and then we are going to solve those problems as well. So um, just a couple of reminders. You're gonna see words like sum. Remember, sum means adding. Um, my page isn't staying down. Six copies, copies would mean like multiplying. There's sum again product would mean multiplication. So these are all words that you guys are already familiar with, you already know, but we're just reviewing. All right, let's get started. A says three fifths of the sum of 13 and six. So when I see sum of 13 and six, I know that means I'm adding 13 and six. Now here it says three fifths of the sum. So um, earlier in the year, we were talking about how of means to multiply. So three fifths of multiplying the sum of 13 and six. So when you write it, you can write it three fifths in parentheses, 13 plus six. This means you do 13 plus six first because it's in parentheses. Now I did not add the, um, multiplication symbol here. You can, but you don't need to. Anytime there's a number that is um, like connected, I guess, to parentheses, that just means you're multiplying. Okay, um, so when solving, you would first solve within the parentheses, right? So I would keep that three-fifths the same, and then 13 plus 6 equals 19. So really what you're doing here is multiplying 3 fifths times 19. Now I want you to pause the video and solve this on your own. All right, you should have gotten 57 fifths. That needed to be turned in, that's an improper fraction. It needs to be turned into a mixed number, which would have been 11 and 2 fifths. So that is the solution. All right, let's move on to B. <clears throat> it says subtract four thirds from. This is um, actually something you guys had a little bit of difficulty with. Subtracting four thirds from. That means I have something, I'm taking four, four thirds from it, which means that's going to come at the end. Then I see one seventh of, there's of again, that means multiply. 63. So let's start with this first part. I know subtracting four thirds from is going to come at the end because they're using from. So one seventh of 63. One seventh of 63. And remember, I am um, not putting my multiplication symbol there because it doesn't need to be there. So one seventh of 63 subtract four thirds from that minus four thirds. Okay, so when you solve this, you'd first do this part here. So if you um, multiplied one seventh times 63, you'd get 63 over seven minus four thirds. So go ahead and solve this. Um, you're gonna need to do a couple things here. Um, all reviewing skills that you already know. So go ahead, solve that, pause the video, and then once you're done, you can unpause. All right, 63 over seven is the same as nine. So really you're doing nine minus four thirds, um, which would, be 
seven and six thirds minus four thirds equals seven and two thirds. All right, um, all these solutions, you guys, I'm just gonna have you do on your own because you know how to do them already. All right, let's look at C. It says six copies of the sum of nine fifths and three. So six copies, that means I'm multiplying by six times six. The sum of nine fifths, sum means add, nine fifths and three. So I know I'm adding nine fifths plus three. And I know I am making six copies of that. So I could either do six at, times six at the end or six in the front, doesn't really matter because I'm solving inside here first. Okay, so when you solve, you'll do inside the parentheses first and then multiply by six. So go ahead, pause the video, solve this problem. All right, I would have made, um, you could have made nine fifths into an improper fraction first, six times. All right, so at the end, you should have gotten 28 and 4 fifths. All right, last one on this page. 3 fourths of the product of 4 fifths and 15. So product means multiplication. So I'm multiplying 4 fifths and 15. And then I'm doing 3 fourths of that. So this is also multiplication here. So I'm going to first write this. The product of 4 fifths times 15 product means multiply. 3 fourths, three -fourths of that. So three-fourths in the beginning. Go ahead and solve for this. Please pause the video. All right, so three-fourths times four-fifths times 15. Um, you could have done some uh, reducing here. These both can be reduced with five, which gives me four times three, so I'm doing three fourths of 12, which is equal to nine. Okay, again, that's a review. Um, you guys have already seen this before. All right, let's move on to page 127. It says, write at least two numerical expressions for each phrase below, then solve. So two thirds of eight. So I could write this in a couple ways, two thirds times eight, or I can write it as two thirds eight in parentheses. Remember that means multiplication. Okay, they also want you to solve, so I want you to pause the video and solve this problem. All right, to solve, you would have gotten um, two times eight over three which is 16 thirds, which is equal to five and one third. All right, let's look at this one. We can um, write this in two different ways. One six of the product of four and nine. So product multiplying one six of multiplying. So it looks like I'm just doing multiplying here. I could do one six in parentheses, four times nine or Four times nine doesn't need to be in that order. I could also write it as nine times four. That does not change how I solve. It just changes the way it looks. So I'd like you to pause this and solve. All right, you should have gotten six as your answer here. Okay, um, let's look at this next part. They want us to use less than, greater than, or equal to to make the number sentences true without calculating. So you're actually not figuring these um, problems out. You're not saying like, all right, I'm going to add these and then add this. No calculating. Okay, so over here, um, they're doing 217 times 
42 plus 48 and 48 fifths. Over here, they're first multiplying 217 by 42 and then adding that number. So without, salt, without um, calculating, how can I decide if one is small, um, greater than, less than, or equal to? Well, I notice over here that they're multiplying by a bigger number. So after this has been completed, they're multiplying it by 217. Over here, you're not adding these first. Um, first, you're multiplying the two and then adding. So that's gonna make this side smaller. So the left side is multiplying by a bigger number. All right, let's move on to B. We have 687 times 3 16 times 7 12 Over here, 687 times 3 16 times 3 12 So um, I'm noticing this is the same and this is the same. 3 16 3 16 What's different is this 3 12 So I need to think, all right, you're doing the same thing here, multiplying. Same thing here, multiplying. So I basically need to decide, is 7 twelfths greater or is 3 twelfths bigger? Well, we should know this because you guys have been comparing fractions. Um, 7 twelfths is greater than 3 twelfths. Um, so multiplying by the same factor will give you a greater um, a greater answer than multiplying by 3 twelfths. Oopsies, I always break these mechanical pencils. All right, that's greater than. Now let's look at the last problem here. We have five times 3.76 plus five times 2.68. So I would actually kind of do this to make this a little bit more clear for myself. Over here, they're um, multiplying five by 6.99. So basically if I were to rewrite this, I'm really multiplying five times 3.76 plus 2.68. That, that's a little easier for me to visualize. So basically I'm multiplying five by this and then five by 6.99. So right now I'm thinking, all right, is this going to be greater or is 6.99 greater? So if you add 3.76 plus 2.68, it is not as much as 6.99. 6.99 is greater than what you're gonna get here. So that would make um, this side larger. And then again, we did this, they're both being multiplied by five. Okay, that's lesson 26. You guys will do um, problems for pages 128 and 129 today.